Yep. That's good. Okay, tell me when to go. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we're in Barbados. Andrea's forcing me to channel. <laughs> because I'm in the bathroom all the time and hot and sweaty and scared from driving on the wrong side of the road so I'm not in a peaceful place so I'll channel we're in a botanical gardens on the remote in east coast of Barbados very beautiful uh, rugged environment and this is a botanical gardens that's been here for I don't know 100 years or something so we've just found a nice little spot so I'm gonna channel Ananda and see what they have to say. It's also called the Andromeda Gardens so we had to stop because uh, some of my best friends are Andromedans. Uh, we are with you again dear ones. Uh, we understand that <clears throat> living in bodies is very very challenging and that is all that our dear one is feeling at this time, the stimulation from a new environment, the stresses of a disconnected mind are creating negative emotions and so she does not feel like channeling. You also will not feel like painting, you will not feel like eating well, you will not feel like being friendly when you are in this agitated emotional state. And this is a very, very good segue into speaking about the nature of the modern human and how they feel and nature. This is nature here. It is a balanced system. Now this is somewhat artificial because a human has decided what plants are going to be here. And what you will find, however, is that there is a constant balancing and ebbing and flowing going, even if going on in nature, even if you are influencing it with your humanity. For example, if you try and plant things that are not suited to the environment, they will not survive, almost no matter what you do. If something is suited to an environment, it will thrive and grow big and it may even take over your garden. This is the kind of feedback that a garden gives you. Your body and your life give you the same kind of feedback. When you are not thriving, when you are in the wrong environment, as if you are a plant living in the wrong climatic zone, you will not thrive. And this is what is happening to a lot of you. But because a lot of you live in urban environments with lots of television and computers and urbanization, you are not thriving, but because your neighbor next door to you is in the same boat and your family members are in the same boat, you think that you are living a normal life. But most of you in the Western world are living far too urbanized lives. And for those of you that know us, you know that we keep telling you to unplug your televisions. And once again, we will say to you, this is the greatest gift that you can give yourself because your frequency will immediately go up and you will immediately begin to thrive more because the television is designed to keep you small, to keep you fearful, to keep you satisfied with living in the small urbanized box, both physically, mentally and emotionally, that your society requires for the society to continue on as it is. We want you to begin to look at yourselves more like a plant. What environment do you like to be in that lets you thrive, that lets you blossom, that lets you bloom? And of course, most of you will say, well, Barbados would be nice. I would like to be in Barbados. But each of you have your own place that would make you thrive, whether it's being near mountains, being near the ocean, being near a lake or a green space. This must become a dream that you pursue because if you all just accept that urbanized life with no joy with no passion with no beautiful environment is your lot in life then you get to live out that decision you get to live out that settling for less humans will die if they are not in an environment physically mentally mentally and emotionally that supports them and we want you to know that if you 
put yourself down, if you settle for less, if you brush your dreams aside and say that you cannot achieve them for whatever reason, your parents told you, your schools told you, whatever the voice inside your head tells you, then you will get to live that experience. Nobody is going to rescue you. Your feeling self tells you what you need. Does it breathe a sigh of relief when it sees a tree? Does it get excited at the thought of swimming in a lake or the ocean? Does it tremble with happiness at the sound of a bird singing? These are your feedback systems and you must pay attention to them. They will get louder and louder as you put less and less urban information into them. Now we understand that there are huge populations on your planet at this time. We understand that you're caught in jobs that you've been trained into for decades. You've got yourself imprisoned in mortgages and family responsibilities based on your conditioning. But there is a door to freedom for each one of you on this planet and it is in your preferences. It is in your passions. A lot of you don't even have passions anymore, but you do have preferences. So listen to your own preferences. They are your spirit speaking to you, what you prefer. Listen to your body. Your body is telling you things. It is telling you whether it is thriving. It is telling you whether it is in the right natural environment for it to blossom and grow. One of the great joys of traveling is seeing different environments, feeling different cultures, tasting different foods, immersing yourself in different air temperatures and water temperatures. And each one of you has the right to choose to live how, with whom, and where you want to. Your governments and your school systems and your families may have different ideas, but we assure you from Spirit's point of view, your freedom and self-expression is the reason that you are incarn incarnated here on this plane. And this is one of the things that our dear one is doing now. She is searching the world for places that she might like to spend time. And we would like you all to take a leaf out of her book and begin to see the world as your oyster, your preferences and choices as spirit speaking through you, and the fact that you have the right to be happy as your natural right. It is not a privilege, it is your natural right. And when you look around at this world and you see such unhappiness and such suffering, you know that your society is off track, your thought processes are confused, and your traditions are at times very, very dysfunctional. But get back into that quiet space of feeling your own preference and pay attention to it, honor it and follow it. And you will slowly but surely be taken out of the darkness into the light. We are Ananda and we will speak to you again at another time. And cut.